So, even when I am in the middle of nowhere, just cycling through the forest, I can grab my phone, connect to the printer through SSH, turn on the printer, and then I can open the Octoprint app, choose the G code that I want to print, start it, the printer will heat up, and then start printing, and of course I can observe the whole process thanks to the webcam. And now as the printer will soon start printing, I can just go back to site. This is the Ender 3, the first version, almost originally as it was. I just replaced the motherboard because I wanted to have silent TMC stepper motor drivers, the build plate because I broke it like a few times, and also the nozzle because I used cheap brass nozzles. Everything else is exactly the same. As you can see, I'm not a huge fan of upgrading 3D printers. For me, a printer is a tool, it's not a project. I have to print a lot of parts for new projects and parts for the indie mill that I sell on my website. But the problem is, I spend a lot of my time right now at the university and it's not like we are learning from books at the university. This one is about running and this one is about Elon Musk. I just put them there to make it look smart. My university is just about writing reports. So, I have a lot of things to print and not enough time. How to solve that? I already tried two solutions. The first one was just squeezing as many parts as I can on the build plate and printing all of them at once. It wasn't perfect because, you know, just a small little error and layer shift or something and you end up with a lot of wasted filament and parts that you can basically throw out. So I tried something else, it's called sequential printing and it's a really interesting option in Prusa Slicer. It is working kind of okay, uh, but it is also very limited and most importantly both options uh, the biggest downside of both options was that I wasn't able to monitor the print as it was printing. And then I thought, how about trying Octoprint? I was quite fortunate that I had a Raspberry Pi laying around, because at the moment of making this video it is almost impossible to buy a Raspberry Pi. I was kind of skeptic about the Octoprint, the idea of connecting that to the printer, I thought that it would be hard to set it up and to install, to manage and everything like this, but honestly I was totally wrong, Octoprint is so easy to use and it is so easy to use the printer thanks to the Octoprint that I totally fell in love with the Octoprint on the very first day. After installing Octoprint, I am not using the SD card on my printer anymore because I can send the G code directly from the slicer to the Octoprint and start printing without even leaving my desk. And this is a pretty cool feature. But of course, that's not all. You can monitor the printer through the webcam, you can change the nozzle temperature, the heated bed temperature, you can move the axis, you can start printing some G code, you can send the G code, you can delete the G code, you can stop printing. Even with my setup, you can actually turn on and off the 3D printer remotely. So there is a lot of things you can do with Octoprint. And as I said, there are plenty of plugins that you can add and well, do whatever you want. Octoprint is incredibly powerful, but it is also really easy to set up. You just have to download the image of the operating system from the Octoprint website and put it on the SD card with some kind of HR and well, that's it. Just put the SD card in the Raspberry and you are ready to start using Octoprint. So far, I have been using Octoprint for about two months and it was just a total mess, a lot of cables connected to the Raspberry Pi and the printer and I was trying to figure out how I'm using Octoprint to create a final nice looking setup and I finally did. I think my setup might be quite interesting to some of you because it's a little bit different from, let's say, the standard Octoprint setup. I decided to add a few more things and design my own holders for the components just to make it easier to use in the future and also just to make it look cool. Having nice holders for everything is a must for me, so I also designed one for the Raspberry Pi for this project. Recently at my science club we have been using also the Raspberry Pi for a project, and a friend of mine recommended me uh, to create a drawer-like design for the Raspberry Pi to easily put it in place in the project and take it out if you need to, and that's what I created. 
Uh, this drawer is compatible also with this part that goes on my robot because I wanted to swap the Raspberry Pi between the printer and the robot. Here is the holder, you can just easily attach it to the frame of the ender with T-nuts and it should be easy to attach it to any other printer because a lot of them use actually the aluminum profiles and if not you can just easily modify that. Sometimes my genius it's it's almost frightening. And here you can slide in place the Raspberry Pi and connect all the cables. This holder is such a simple thing but it is just so nice that without any screws you can pull out the Raspberry Pi and put it back in place whenever you need to. It's just really satisfying to have that. Next was the camera holder. I'm using a camera that I found in my projects box. It's a Logitech camera, the image quality is pretty bad but it works okay for the Octoprint. The field of view is really narrow so I had to design my own holder for that to get it working and uh, to see what's actually printing on the printer. I tried looking at some models on Thingiverse but nothing was really working for me so I designed my own simple hinge system with the arm that you can attach the camera to. If you would like to use this holder for a different camera you can just redesign this top piece and create a different attachment to the camera and that should work. The camera holder, the Raspberry Pi holder and parts that I used for this project are in the description. I bought an extension cord with a switch and here I connected the printer and the Raspberry Pi and with just one switch I can turn both devices on. As you can see I also have something between the printer and the extension cord and that is a smart socket that I can control through Wi-Fi. This is a smart socket from Teplink, it's called P100 and it's probably the most inexpensive socket that I found online. There are plenty of such devices and this is something pretty cool because you can remotely through Wi-Fi control your socket and turn on and off different devices. In this case, I want to control the printer. But there is another reason why I bought exactly this socket, the P100. I found an excellent Python library on GitHub that you can use to control this socket and the initial idea was to add buttons to the user interface of Octoprint and control the socket through here, but actually it looks like running custom Python script through Octoprint is not that easy to do, so as for now I'm just controlling it through uh, the app or through my Python script, through SSH, uh, but maybe in the future I will find a plugin or figure out how to write my own plugin and control this socket from here because that would be something cool. The main idea behind this socket is to have the Raspberry Pi on all the time and the printer off all the time and then when I am not here at home I can just remotely turn on the printer, start printing and once it is done I can turn it off. But here is the problem, you have the Raspberry Pi here at home, you have your computer here, your other devices connected to Wi-Fi, all of that is your local network but you cannot access your local network from the outside and that's really good for security. So how can you connect to the Raspberry Pi from the outside network to control it? Well, there are a few solutions to that. One of them that is really totally unrecommended is opening ports on your router. You really shouldn't do that, it's not really that safe. Just find different solutions and one of the solutions is Octo Everywhere, I think it's called. It's an Octoprint plugin, it's free and you can thanks to that easily control your printer wherever you are. There is also a plugin called Spaghetti Detector or Detective and it also lets you control the printer from wherever you are. But I decided to use something else, Tailscale. Tailscale is a VPN, Virtual Private Network, and just to keep things simple, you can install their app on your different devices and it connects all of them together and the devices with different new virtual IP address see each other as they are in the same network. The cool thing is that you can actually install it on your computer, on your laptop, even on your smartphone and you can just open the app and control the printer through the Octoprint app just like you are at home in your local network. Of course, you also have to install the Tailscale on your Raspberry Pi, but it's really easy to do and it's also free. It's not sponsored by Tailscale in any way. I just really like their service because it works just so well and I'm also using it to remotely control my computer. So there is just so many advantages of using the Octoprint for your printer and having a Raspberry Pi uh, at home. It's a lot of fun to set it up, it's a lot of just cool things that you can learn and I totally recommend that uh, to all of you. Even though I'm not a huge fan of upgrades to 3D printers, well I think I can call myself at least an Octoprint fan and I totally recommend trying that out. 
All the links to the files and things that are useful are in the description. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.